right, everybody, welcome to the start of our show. Now we have our first guest, and he's an author. He wrote this book called The Technologists. Please welcome Matthew Pearl. <laughs> Matthew, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad you're here. You've written some books that have been on the New York Times bestsellers list, right? Yeah, this is my, my fourth novel, and uh, I've been lucky enough to, uh, for the books to find an audience, and this was a really fun one to write. Now, uh, the book is called The Technologist, and of course it's got a, a local flavor to, uh, to us here in New England. What's it all about? Yeah, absolutely. This is a historical thriller that takes place in 1868 uh, when there's a series of sort of technological disasters and the only people that can figure out what's going on and stop it is the first class at MIT, uh, the class of 1868, and that's what this story is about. Now, uh, you actually, when you wrote the book, you, you went around to MIT, didn't you, and, and uh, write down what you saw there? Yeah, well, I sort of soaked up the atmosphere. The truth is that the 19th century MIT doesn't exist anymore. They mm -hmm. tore down all the old buildings, but there's still something very MIT about old MIT that, that still exists. So I, I tried to sort of peek around because I, I didn't go to MIT. I'm not an, an alumnus or an affiliate or anything. I'm, I've always been sort of a, fascinated by MIT, which was part of this project. It, it gave me a chance to experience the, that sort of cool, edgy part of MIT and, and put it into history. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the book is a thriller. Uh, so it's, a, it's kind of a fiction piece, but based on some, uh, some historical facts with MIT and the students there. Yeah, what I did was I, I, I sort of dove into that, that original class at MIT. And MIT was really pretty controversial when it started. Mm -hmm. um, no one had ever done anything like it. The idea of teaching in a laboratory, which sounds sort of obvious to us, mm -hmm. unheard of. And uh, the idea that you would be not just looking at science, but at technology, at the way, to, at the way science changes our lives, mm -hmm. also was considered very outrageous. So I took the real characters, the real professors, the real students from that first class in MIT, and then I put them in a story that, that I cooked up, that I imagined, which was, well, what if at that time when people distrusted scientists and, and technology so much, when, when the, the idea of the mad scientist first started, mm -hmm. uh, what if we needed to depend on them, if there were these sort of scientific catastrophes that started happening, and they were the ones who would have to, to have to crack the case. So I got to combine the history and the fiction. Now you, uh, you wrote these books, or some of these books when you were in law school, weren't you? Well, my first book, my mm -hmm. first book. I, this is my fourth book, and I got started pretty much by accident. Mm -hmm. It's sort of weird to say you wrote by accident, but I hadn't planned on being a writer, and I was in law school, and I came to that realization that most law students have that I didn't want to be a lawyer. Uh, and I just started playing around with an idea for a story that I had, and right before I graduated law school, one month before, I, I got a contract with a publisher mm -hmm. that's been my publisher for these four books, um, and that became my first novel, The Dante Club. And so, um, like most things I do in life, it, it wasn't a plan and mm -hmm. it just sort of happened, but I'm glad it did because I, I mostly enjoy being a writer. So, uh, do you do anything with law now? I don't. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do. I can read my contracts, mm -hmm. which most writers can <laughs> because they're very complicated. They don't listen to me when I tell them to change things, but at least I can understand what, what I'm getting into. Mm -hmm. If uh, we want people to find the book, obviously you have a website. Let's tell everybody where it is. Yeah, I'd love people to check this out. It's MatthewPearl.com, mm -hmm. which is uh, M-A-T-T-H-E-W-P, as in Peter, E-A-R-L. And that has links to where you can get the book. Um, you know, you can order it, obviously, on, on a lot of online sites like Amazon. Uh, and there's also an audio book for those who are stuck in the car and might want a fun story to listen to. Uh, this, this, as I say, was a really fun book to write, so I hope it's, it's fun to read also. Now, the, the first three books you wrote all became bestsellers on the New York mm -hmm. Times bestsellers. This book's been about a month out now. Yeah. So do you, do you think you're going to have a four for four day here with... Uh, Four <laughs> times New York yeah, Times this bestseller? Yeah, one, this one's a bestseller as well. Oh, okay. Um, so I've, I've You're been, already there then. Yeah, I've yeah. been really lucky with... Well, you don't uh, need us. You're well, doing no, just I fine. Do. <laughs> How about it, everybody? <laughs> well, uh, 
One last thing, if you want to tell people a little bit more about the technologist before they go out and get the book, what's something they can expect when they read it? Sure. Well, you know, one thing that people don't uh, are surprised by when they when they open the book is that there was a female student at MIT, uh, mm -hmm. and and they asked me, is that real or did you make that up? And it is real. There was this woman named Ellen Swallow. She was the first female student, a uh, real tough character. I mean, you had to be tough to be the only female at MIT, and I make her into a, a character here. So that's that's one way you can you can sort of realize that there was more going on back then than you might think. Matthew Pearl, we thank you for coming, everybody. The book is The Technologist, and you can find it online. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you, Matthew.